Melanie Perkins, born May 13, 1987, is an Australian technology entrepreneur who is the chief executive officer and co-founder of Canva. Perkins is one of the youngest female CEOs of a tech startup valued over a billion dollars. As of May 2021, Perkins was one of Australia's richest women, having a net worth of $6.5 billion. And she's done it all without a college degree. Now, 10 things you may not know about Melanie Perkins. Number 10, aspirations of a young Melanie. Melanie Perkins was born in Perth, Western Australia. She is the daughter of an Australian-born teacher and a Malaysian engineer of Filipino and Sri Lankan descent. In high school, Perkins aspired to become a professional figure skater and would routinely wake up at 4.30 a.m. to train. Throughout my life, I've always put a lot of effort into any single thing that I did. This goal-oriented mindset would continue to be present as Melanie's goals shifted to business. Number nine early years of an entrepreneur. By the age of 14, Melanie had started her first business, selling handmade scarves at shops and markets throughout Perth. She credits this experience with developing her entrepreneurial drive as she never forgot the freedom and excitement from building a business. Number eight, business inspiration of a college dropout. After high school, Perkins enrolled at the University of Western Australia majoring in communications, psychology, and commerce. At this time, Perkins was also a private tutor for students learning graphic design. She noticed the difficulties that students had in learning design programs such as Adobe Photoshop. It would often take students a semester at university to be introduced to the basic features of these complex design programs. Perkins thought that there may be a business opportunity in making the design process easier. Her idea was to make a design platform where no technical experience was required. She dropped out of university at age 19 to pursue her first business, Fusion Books, with her future husband, Cliff Olbrecht. Number seven, testing the idea for Canva. Fusion Books was founded by Perkins and Olbrecht in 2007. Fusion Books allowed students to design their own school yearbooks by using a simple drag and drop tool equipped with a library of design templates that could be populated with photos, illustrations, and fonts. Melanie's mother was a teacher who would also coordinate the school yearbook. Melanie saw how much time was required to design a yearbook and thought the high level of consumer friction would make yearbooks a great niche to test the idea for Canva. So Ulbrich would cold call schools in an attempt to get new clients for Fusion Books. Their parents would often help with the printing of the yearbooks, and over five years, Fusion Books grew into the largest yearbook company in Australia, and even expanded into France and New Zealand. Number six, rejected over 100 times. Perkins and Ulbrich were originally based in Perth, and while there, Melanie was rejected over 100 times trying to bring Canva to life. Perkins and Ulbrich would push forward for three years before connecting with the right people. Their grit and persistence would come to pay off not too far down the line. Number five, the third Canva founder. In 2011, prominent investor Bill Tai visited Perth to judge a startup competition. When Perkins and Ulbrich pitched Tai the initial idea for Canva, they received no funding, but became regular fixtures at gatherings hosted by Ty for investors and startup founders. Some of these gatherings took place in Silicon Valley, where Perkins and Albrecht met Lars Rasmussen, the co-founder of Google Maps. He expressed interest in the idea, but told the founders to put everything on hold until they found a tech team of the caliber required. Rasmussen then introduced Perkins and Albrecht to Cameron Adams an ex-Google employee with the relevant technical expertise. When I met with Lars, we had an incredible conversation and we talked about the future of publishing and the future of the world, and he said he'd become our tech advisor. Initially, Adams was not interested in joining the business as he was starting a business of his own. When Adams was in Silicon Valley trying to find funds for his startup, Perkins had sent him another email asking him yet again to join their business. After that email, he agreed to join Canva, becoming its third founder and chief product officer. Want to hear more about entrepreneurs that have succeeded without a college degree? Subscribe to our channel, where our goal is to educate, encourage, and entertain zero-degree entrepreneurs just like you. Now back to the countdown. Number four, 
Women in Startup Perkins is amongst the 2% of female CEOs of venture-backed companies. She wrote an article discussing her journey as a young entrepreneur to encourage people from diverse backgrounds to pursue big dreams and concentrate on their goals. Perkins has implemented policies at Canva that eliminate bias in the hiring process, resulting in Canva obtaining 41% female representation, significantly higher than the industry average of 28%. Number 3. Interesting Extracurricular Activities Perkins took up an interest in kite surfing when she discovered many prominent venture capitalists used this to network with founders. She would regularly kite surf with venture capitalist Bill Tye. Perkins has also traveled the world extensively, crediting a trip to India as a life-changing experience. Number 2. Outlook on Money In 2019, Ulbricht proposed to Perkins on vacation in Turkey. The engagement ring was valued at a whopping $30. That's right, $30. The couple have been critical of materialism with Ulbricht stating, what is the point of hoarding stuff? They have expressed a desire to donate most of their fortune to charity. And after they married in 2021, they joined the Giving Pledge, committing at least half of their fortune to philanthropic purposes. Nine down, one to go. Which were the most surprising to you? Were there any interesting things that we missed? Comment down below. Number one, employee quality control. Melanie Perkins personally onboards all new hires, which is now over 1,500 people. During the onboarding meeting, she explains the team culture, describes her vision, and shows them the business investor deck. All employees can become partial owners of the company with stock options, which equate to 5% of the business, or around $2 billion. This has been 10 Things You May Not Know About Melanie Perkins. If you would like to suggest a zero degree entrepreneur for a future episode, or you yourself are a zero degree entrepreneur and you would like to share your story, please go to zerodegreeentrepreneur.com.